Hello and welcome to this month's edition of Capital Markets View. Um, as ever, I'm joined by Taryn Wade on the sofa. How are you, Taryn? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Good. I am good. So we will, as we ever do, <laughs> dive straight into so volume figures um, and that refi recap bit up. Still some nice, you know, uptick in M and A. So last time we recorded, we talked about the fact that there was a big M&A pipeline. Yes. Um, some of that is slightly delayed because some of it is working its way um, through the market. And, and we also have um, we have regulatory issues around one of the deals, um, Cobham. Okay. So uh, there's been a lot of room to do refinancings yep. and even some repricings. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. And I think... That, so next slide, repricings. Yeah. And obviously... You know, it's not a huge jump in October. No, but after the kind of complete <laughs> desert for certain periods. Yeah, and that's why we put we put all the way back to January 17 in this graph because you can just see that we haven't seen a lot of repricing activity over the past year. So we're starting to see more of that deals coming out of their um, non-call periods and our soft call periods, and also, um, you know, there's just there's just a lot of demand from CLO funds and other investors. But, but actually driven quite a lot by the pricing dynamic changing <laughs> underneath everything. Well, yes. I mean, uh, spreads and yields continue to decline. Um, there is a lot of demand. There's a strong technical demand for, for the loan asset. Um, I'm beginning to see some <laughs> margins touching, spreads touching 3%. Yes, yes, we are. Um, this is this is three point nine nine percent in terms of yields, um, okay. and that's and you know there is more bifurcation in yep. the market. So in the next slide, you know August and September we saw all tightening in terms of um, flexes, flexes tighter, but in October a third of deals were flexed wider, and that if you look at what the activity has been yeah, like yeah. this year, that's actually yeah. quite a lot. So. There have been some deals that have been popular and some deals that have been less popular. Some spread, some deals have been done at Euribor plus 500 and some at 300. Um, Kantar, which was a cross-border deal it, in the U.S. We'll talk a bit more about the yeah. U.S., yeah. but um, they, they didn't get the whole tranche that they wanted in the U.S. They actually got a lot more um, from the European side of things. So okay. um, there is, you know, there is more choosiness. From so investors. without speaking about specific names, you know, mm -hmm. so do you feel that the market is beginning to price credit more and to be more focused on what it really would like and some of the other credits which, um, you know, yes, we'll take it, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay for it? Well, I think that's been a shift that we've seen for a long time in terms of more credit differentiation in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when there is a strong technical factor, then we do have you know spreads and, and yields come down. But I think compared to where we were, you know, back before the financial crisis, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, credit is definitely priced yeah. uh, much more. I mean, where everything went at one price. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, but I, I like this graph. <laughs> it's interesting with the widening because, you know, we're so used to everything flexes, you know, down. So it's interesting to see that coming back into the markets and things going up. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, goodness, um, uh, open jaws, you know, the US and Europe, very, very different pricing levels. And rates haven't particularly moved underneath that all. Yeah, and I this mean, is this just doesn't spread show as well. rates. Yeah. So that's, that's a whole different story because of the difference in rate, in rate environments. Um, but, you know, there, there's been um, less demand for, from, from the US for credit. There's been a real flight to quality in the okay. US. Um, so for single B spreads, we've seen um, a big uptick as compared to Europe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of nervousness in the U.S. in terms of from retail funds, uh, a lot of withdrawals from the retail funds um, in the U.S. Uh, so it's it's a bit too it's way too early to talk about the canary <laughs> in the coal mine, but mm. people are getting more concerned about credit quality, and that's I, having an impact in the states. I, yes, and I think generally. Investors are telling me that they are more worried about their portfolios. There, there are more, you know, maybe not. We're not talking about distressed, but maybe more stressed situations. Yeah. And investors saying, you know, companies are behind where they were the prior year, or they haven't made their budgets. You know, there, there are signs that things uh, a bit they, stressed. Yeah. Okay, that that's that's interesting. Um, and here's the secondary market, which I think is is showing it considerably in the states and uh, and a little bit in Europe. 
Yeah, I mean, things seem much worse in the U.S. in terms of, and, and that is probably reflecting the fact that demand dynamics have changed. Um, and in Europe, you know, we've seen a similar dynamic in October. And if you go to the next slide, we can see that, you know, when we talked last time, there was this the sudden surge in credits that yes. were 101 and above. Yes. And that was, that was due to the technical factors. But yep. now um, some of that has been taken out of the market. So yeah, so I think this all reflects, you know, more choosiness from investors, bifurcation, more nervousness. Okay, um, but a good picture in CLO world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, loads of issuance, um, and I was talking to somebody at a conference recently. And they were talking about how they think, you know, there are still quite a lot of warehouses open out there, which will lead to quite a lot of demand. And you know what's out there in loan world, what's out there in CLO world? Yeah, so we've done this slide a bit differently than we usually do. Okay. Um, we are looking at, and we think this might be slightly more intuitive for our viewers. Yep. So net supply would be supply minus repayments into the index. These are all index-based um, LE, LE, LE data. So net supply versus CLO issuance, which gives you an idea of what is the excess um, in the market um, in terms of net supply in the market. Uh, so obviously, CLO issuance doesn't take into account all of the demand. Mm, managed um, accounts, direct managed lending. Managed accounts, other, other um, multi-strategy funds. Yep. So this looks like, obviously, net supply was up for October, so it was a bit more of a balanced market. Um, but obviously, that red bar doesn't take into yeah. account all of the demand. So if you, I mean, without putting any exact figures on, if you put in managed accounts and direct lending, the red bar's probably above the blue, yeah. which feeds into the general pricing is down overall. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would agree. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um, so now we're in autumn, in fact, the last month of autumn. So. Yep, getting ready for the holiday season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Christmas things are already in the <laughs> shops. Yeah. So thank you very much. No problem. Um, as ever, if you have any questions for Taryn and me, please feel free to give us a call or drop us an email. Thank you.